Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1990. We're going to be taking a look at the Steve Morse Band and they're going to be playing through General Lee. So let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. <laughs> I'm just going to jump in here before we change to the dirtier tone that Steve's about to get into because this is such a tight performance just from the whole band. Also, we have Dave LaRue on bass here and I've got a sub here so I'm really spoiled with the bass sound that's coming out of this performance. It is just crazy, the tightness, but also the way that Dave lays down these bass lines is so impressive. And also the way that he changes techniques from slap bass and then playing with his fingers and then just playing with his thumb and he gets so many different qualities to the bass sound throughout the performance. It's not just one sound the whole time. So the bass is great to listen to as well. But getting into Steve and the playing, even just the intro by itself, have a listen to that because there are two things going on at once and the way that Steve combines those bends with the walking bass line, it's a shame that we haven't got a closer camera angle so that we can see what's going on with the fretboard because it is so impressive to listen to, but it'll be great to see it up close so from the intro straight off the bat you've got some impressive playing and then the super clean tone and Steve's technique is second to none on the fretboard there's a reason why for five years running he was voted the best overall guitarist in guitar player magazine and when Steve does add anything to his sound in terms of the tone it's just going to embellish it because of the technique that's already in place it's never to hide anything and when we get into the alternate picking with the heavier tone you can really start to hear how precise that is but the whole band here, I just want to mention about the sound and how it's not overdone. There's so much headroom in this performance, obviously with the clean tone, but you'll also find once Steve does add some overdrive to the sound, it's still so well put together. And the sound that we get with this performance it's almost like we've got lots of genres going on at the same time because there's definitely blues in there just by the nature of the progression that we've got, but also it's more progressive. So we've got jazz elements in there, of course, with Steve's playing. That's always going to be in there somewhere, but then we've got country that 
pops in now and again with that hybrid picking technique that Steve uses. So we've got so many different sounds. It just tweaks your ear now and again into a different genre, but then we come back into that main blues and a little bit of rock in there as well. And Steve has said that his playing is too rock for jazz, but there's just that jazz river running through his playing the whole time. Steve is one of those guys that had a lot of jazz that he could sprinkle all over the place, but it was also tastefully done because when he does throw that in there, it's never to detract away from the main progression that he's playing over or the main style that he's playing. This is the thing that he can somehow blend in these different styles of playing. Like I mentioned, country music with those bends that he throws in. It sometimes sounds like that, but it's all so relevant to what he's playing. And that is the genius of Steve's playing. He can get so many different styles and so many different ways of expressing with his playing all at the same time and make it seamless over the same backing, the same progression, but he just takes you on so many interesting journeys. And Steve is one of those artists who started early, but in terms of getting out there and playing, as soon as he graduated from the University of Miami School of Music, him and Andy West, they'd set up Dixie Dregs and got a band together and were out there gigging. And they just played so much that just a year later, they ended up signing a record deal because... They got noticed by some of the people in the industry at the time, including the Allman Brothers band manager, and they signed to Capricorn Records, and that was in 1976. So it would have been when Steve was only 22. And the first album that they released was Freefall, and that was really a jazz fusion album. And even though it got great reviews, unfortunately, it didn't sell particularly well. And the second album was What If in 1978, and that was classed as a fusion album, and it had elements of country and folk and southern rock and also classical. So it had changed a little bit from that first release. And unfortunately, it wasn't selling particularly well right at the end of the Capricorn label's existence, they released Night of the Living Dregs, and unfortunately the record label went bust. So they were without a label in 1979, but that same year they signed with Arista Records, and it's interesting because the record label handed all of the production duties over to Steve, so that's another thing that he's got in his arsenal is great guitarist, great writer, but also the ability to produce. I always say that's a totally different skill set. So he went on to then produce that album, Dregs of the Earth, and that got to number 27 in the jazz album charts. And unfortunately, the record label weren't happy with the sales. They started to panic a bit. So they thought they would change the name of the band to Just The Dregs. And they released Unsung Heroes, which was the next album. And unfortunately, the change in name didn't help the sales. So in 1982, they released their album Industry Standard, and I think with that album, they felt under pressure from the management to release something that had vocals and singing on. So they got a hold of two singers. The first one was Alex Lidgetwood from Santana, and the second was Patrick Simmons from the Doobie Brothers. So it was a bit of a shift in the sound from previous albums, but it got great reviews, and that's what started Steve's dominance of that guitar player magazine poll for the overall best player. He won that five years in a row, as I mentioned earlier. Let's check out the rest of the performance.
there we have it. The technical ability on show is crazy. Some of those bass lines that Dave is throwing together, just listen to that, how concise they are in terms of the way that he gets them just all to pop out through his technique. It's just such great technique on the bass and also, of course, Steve on the guitar, the way that they're just playing in combination. And some of those runs that Steve has obviously got the luxury of being able to alternate pick those but the way that Dave picks them out with his fingers is so cool because they're so clear and so well pronunciated all of these runs we also got to hear those alternate pick runs that were going on there from Steve and the interesting thing about Steve's technique the way that he brings in that alternate picking and then with the right hand he anchors his little finger on the body of the guitar to give himself that solid reference point for his alternate picking just to be super accurate with that so rewind it if you want to just to have a look at the way that that picking hand changes and some players just float in midair when they alternate pick some like to anchor onto the guitar so it's just an interesting little thing about his technique everyone's different in terms of how they find their technique develop especially with fast techniques like alternate picking when you do start to ramp up the speed everyone starts to lean towards their own personal technique for their own physiology and that's something that I have mentioned in other videos and in 1983 is when Steve set up the Steve Morse band because the dregs had fulfilled their contract with Arista Records and they toured a hell of a lot as well and I think some of the band members were a bit tired of it all so they disbanded in 1983 and the Steve Morse band was then set up and in 1984 is when Steve signed to Electra Records and he released his album The Introduction. He released the album Stand Up in 1985 and he went on tour with Rush, he was the main opener and in 1986 is when he joined up with Kansas so his own stuff was on the back burner then and he also played for Deep Purple in 1994 and this is the funny thing about top guitar players, I mean Deep Purple as a band, they've had so many great players but sometimes the most melodic thing to play on a guitar isn't the most technically demanding. So you can imagine a guy like Steve Morse, his technical ability just playing smoke on the water. It's one of those things about music is that sometimes the most melodic thing, like I said, is the thing that isn't that hard to play and it just so happened that that riff is a classic example of that and this is what the top players do you might go and see a really famous band where the guitar solo is quite simple it's not that technically demanding but it's melodic and the guy playing it more often than not could absolutely shred your face off with their technical ability but they always play a great rendition of the original record of the original solo and always play for the composition and this is the case with guys like Steve is that you can see the amount of ability that he's got in this video and getting into some of his jazz fusion stuff that he does so much ability there such an amazing player but I guarantee you that if the composition demands it he will play something really slow melodically and not take the limelight away from the composition and that is the true markings of a top professional, a top musician and just a top player. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!